Bird right now, wanted to go live. This is a great teachable moment. Uh, I kind of want to tell you the whole experience of um, driving. It's uh, about one, almost one in the morning and uh, at Metro Airport. And you're going to see a front view and a back. End. Currently, there are about 100 cars ahead of me. And, you know, when you're driving, you're going to have to make decisions. This is a really good teachable moment to help all of you kind of understand what's going on. Um, if I move up, I'm going to lose my spot and then I'm going to end up blocking and I'm going to have to go around. I don't really want to do that. But if I stay here, the question is, how long will I be stuck here? Uh, driving is about decisions. Uh, I've uh, shot four or five videos, you know, both hands and wheel. Obviously, I have a GoPro here. Uh, driving to Metro Airport, uh, the really curvy roads, the semi trucks, these are all things you have to deal with when you're out here driving. And they don't really teach you this in driver's head because most of the lessons end at 9 o'clock p.m. But when you're out here at Metro Airport, it's a whole new world. It's a whole new experience, right? And if you get a chance to drive to Metro Airport, it's, it's, it's eye-opening to see the planes come, to see the volume of traffic come. Uh, if you live in a large metropolitan city or if you live in a smaller city or province or suburb, you know, uh, safety is really important. You got to deal with the semi-trucks because they are traveling at a really high speed. You don't want to hang around those semi-trucks. You want to learn everything you can. And me putting this channel together, I wanted to give you information to allow you to be successful. Thank you for the thumbs up and, and give you a perspective. So when you're out here, when you're 18, 19, 20, you don't panic. You are not overwhelmed because coming to an airport can be overwhelming. Um, you know, you're waiting for your loved ones. Some of you've never been to a metro airport uh, and it can be very overwhelming. You know, I'm gonna switch views uh, a second and then show you what I'm gonna have to deal with. See, so this is what I have to deal with. I'm sitting here, uh, I'm at a half a tank of gas. Thank God I, I filled up, right? Because you could run out of gas and that would be a horrible situation if you ran out of gas because the price is extra <laughs> at the Metro airport, right? Because they know people need to you know, fuel up. They know people need to get home and then they charge extra money. So, you know, I'm giving you the situation. I've been sitting here probably 12 to 15 minutes already. Uh, my loved one is coming in, you know, from Florida on spirit. You know, do I sit here? Do I get out of line and try to get up by the door? I send a text. Do I wait here? I always want to show you real life. And that's what this is about. I made a choice to go live. Why not? to really give you a real sense of real life. And that's what I try to bring you when you look at my videos, right? To give you a perspective of being a safe driver. Now, I see cars moving up. I'm getting a little bit excited. But also, you gotta be patient. And when you're patient, you're able to make good decisions. Uh, for a moment there, I did see the police coming because technically this is a traffic jam and we're jammed up. So the question is, what will the police do? Probably nothing much because we're all picking up our loved ones or dropping people off, right? Let me go ahead and switch to view. So, you know, when you're out here driving, you've got to make decisions, you know, uh, you're getting up from bed, you know, 11 o'clock, hour to get to Metro Airport, hour and a half to get back. You could fall asleep at the wheel. And this is why the laws are the way they are to protect younger drivers because you learn through experience you learn through making good decisions hopefully you can hear me hopefully my audio's up you learn through these decisions and then when you learn through these decisions you know good things will happen right and hopefully the right things will happen so i'm still looking i see some gaps but people aren't moving so part of me says you know i need to maybe go ahead and move up why are you at the airport? Um, I'm picking up someone, yes. Um, I was gonna say I was picking up Mr. Beast, but yeah, I'm picking up someone, picking up a family member, they're coming in from Florida, right? And as you know, the coronavirus, thank you for asking. The coronavirus is strong. I got my second shot, I got Moderma. I'm a frontline worker, I'm a school teacher, I teach driver's ed, as you know. So you still gotta be careful, I, I mask up and you know, this is 
what my mask looks like, right? Uh, um, and like them. So yes, uh, if you get a chance to go to that metro airport and and live that experience, you know, you, you're gonna know what it's about. You know, I'm here for questions. I want to give you that real life true experience. So I see more cars moving up. Now, my loved one, the flight should be hitting Detroit Metro Airport pretty soon. I sent a text out. So, you know, the question is, what would you do? Would you stay here and wait? And then when your loved one texts you, you go up to the terminal? Would you try to get up to the terminal? But if you block it, they're going to make you move because technically you cannot just sit here and block the terminal because there are hundreds, if not thousands of people coming into Metro Airport and leaving Metro Airport. So that's a decision you'll have to make. And if you make the wrong decision, you're gonna to have to get out of line and come back, right? I wait, yeah, you're right. I'm gonna I'm gonna chill here and wait too. I see some people kind of moving up. Um, my gas is good. I'm at a half a tank. I'm not worried, you know, I put 20 bucks in, I got me about a half a tank. So you, you can see, I'm gonna switch screens a minute. See, we're starting to move up a little bit. And that's where that patience comes in, right? I'm just sitting here and, and that's okay. When I get this text on the phone, then I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna bust to move up to uh, the door. I'm gonna switch views again. So you can see when you're driving, this is what the light is like in your eyes and it blinds you. So this is, some, you see the brake lights, they reflect in your eyes. If you're not used to this as a driver, it will blind you. It will be hard for you to see. So you're getting real life experience and that's what I wanted to share with you is that real life experience. Uh, I sent a text, but you know, um, my loved one could be, uh, it does get boring. Um, <laughs> but what, what can you do, right? So I decided to go live, you know, on YouTube to really give you a real perspective of real life, right? Those of you who support me, subscribe to me, I really want to bring you really, really, really good content, right? I ordered um, a GoPro from Amazon. Question, I'm a little nervous about starting driving school. Any tips? Number one, um, first, thank you for subscribing to my channel. Hopefully you do. Um, talk to your driving teacher. Uh, connect with him or her. There's some really good instructors out there and there's some crazy instructors out there, right? Um, and you want to listen, learn all you can, take good notes. Most driver's ed schools, and I'm speaking in general, right? I'm in a certain part of the country. A lot of driver's ed schools are full remote, right? And then what you want to do is just get all your knowledge, take good notes, um, ask questions. And then if you can get a chance to drive soon, then drive, listen to your instructor. Most instructors will take you in the parking lot neighborhoods, making right turns, making left turns, working on parking. Right? So those things are the basic maneuvers, hand over hand in, hand over hand out. You're going to be working toward passing that knowledge test. And those are your goals. Good instructors will allow you to be comfortable, will allow you to, you know, be patient. If you have an instructor who's impatient with you, that's going to cause you a lot of anxiety. Um, and it takes experience. I've been teaching drivers at about 21 years. I've always been really patient and really chilled. Um, and that allows students to feel comfortable. I want to get to know you. If you were my student, I would get to know you. I'm a school teacher. We would talk about school. We would talk about sports. What do you want to mm -hmm. do when you get to college, right? Um, so it's super important. Uh, how did you learn to drive? Um, coming from Detroit, I took it actually at my high school. Um, and it was the class after school. You're welcome. Ask questions. It was a class after school, like from 2.30 to 3.30. Um, it was like a semester. They were about 40 kids in the class. See more people are moving up now, so I'm just going to move up. There were about 40 kids in the class, so we did the classroom portion, the knowledge test, and then actually they had about 25 mm -hmm. cars on the range. Um, and you know, that was the scary part because you could be in a car on a range, a range is like, like a parking lot. We would have gates there, they would have traffic lights. And what I'm gonna do is go to Metro Detroit. There's still some driver's head courses in Detroit where, 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 that um, I can go to. And I wanna shoot some content there, really bring you some good history, some rich environments, so you can learn from that. But we would drive on the course, they would have uh, traffic lights, 
uh, just like a little uh, course. Say like going around the mall, like that round drive around the mall. We have yield signs, stop signs, but they would be traffic lights. And then we would learn. Uh, and then you would drive on the range. Uh, then uh, when the class is over, you would go to the DNV and take your road test. I was so nervous. My dad said, boy, turn on that air conditioning. Make sure that that lady's nice and comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I did, um, you know, what he uh, said and I passed the test. She gave me a couple of directions going north or south, east or west. I didn't know. I just went straight and then I passed the test. Um, but that's how it was. A lot of school districts today don't have the money to do driver's ed. Hence, Sears Driving School, different types of driving schools around the country would spring up. You know, you buy four or five cars, you put the brakes in, you put the dual mirrors in, you get the insurance, you start advertising, and you get kids in. Uh, the laws changed. Uh, back then, you just needed um, to go on a course, uh, take your road test at the DMV, and then you're good. Today, they have the, you know, the level one, the level two, um, different states. You might have to have six hours behind the wheel, eight hours, 10 hours, because a lot of teenagers were killing themselves uh, driving at night, having accidents. So these laws are designed to uh, what, what, encourage what, what? you to uh, be safe, encourage your parents to get more involved in your driving. Uh, you know, late night drives like this, you could just go off the road, fall asleep. Um, but they teach you how to endure driving and they teach you how to stay awake. They teach you responsibility. Driving is responsibility. And a lot of times some drivers aren't mature enough to take driver's ed. I've taught 17 year olds, 18 year olds, 20 year olds. I've taught teens, I've taught adults. So everyone has a different story and a journey. Maybe you have anxiety, maybe you were in a bad accident. Maybe you just weren't mature enough to take driver's ed. So the line, uh, have you ever had a bad student? Yes, I've had a few bad students along the way, meaning they don't wanna listen. They're very hard headed and um, that makes it difficult to train them because they don't want to listen. Um, normally what I do, I, I treat them like an adult. I don't lie. I pull them off to the side. I have a real honest talk with them. And then I talk to their parents too. Uh, it's about balance and it's about really teaching them a life skill. This is why I'm blessed to be in this position to teach driver's ed and, and, it is transcending. All of you who support me and follow me and subscribe, you are the next generation drivers. And if you really digest my content and look at it, you're gonna learn how to drive. You're gonna learn how to be a defensive driver. Um, I do have a GoPro coming in the next few days. What was funny, I ordered the GoPro 9. The battery packs came, the memory card came. Now I'm waiting for the GoPro, right? Um, and then I can really bring you some really good content and really prepare you for the next step. Good in-car stuff. I can interview people. So I'm really looking forward to that, to the channel, to bring you even better value. So the line is starting to move a little bit. I still did not get a text from my loved one yet. So I'm just still gonna sit here. Now the police could come and say, everyone move. And then we're all screwed because technically we're taking up this one lane. And you know, you gotta be safe. Buses are in the middle lane and the left lane. And you gotta really uh, make good decisions here. So I'm just gonna sit, wait for that text. Hopefully, if not, then I'm gonna start rolling up. But I don't wanna have to drive all the way around, right? Ask questions, I'm here for you. I'm at uh, Detroit Metro Airport waiting to pick up a loved one. Uh, it's almost 1 a.m. in the morning. What are you guys doing up so late, right? But that's good though, right? I wanna bring you real value, right? I wanna show you, hey, what is it like when you get tired on the expressway? What do you do when you go to Metro Airport? What if you miss the wrong exit, right? Just keeping it real, have you, uh, yeah, for real. You know, I just wanna keep it real with you and if you know that I bring you value and that I'm real with you, like, man, I love this guy driving with Miles, right? Um, night Isles, haha, that's right. I'm a Night Owl too. You know, playing video games, uh, you know, on YouTube, right? Uh, you know, on TikTok, you know, trying to learn, trying to do all that. Oh, that's my call. So I'm going to go ahead. So that's my call, but I'm going to take you with me. So I'm going to go ahead and move up. I'm going to um, turn my wheel. 
and the line is starting to move up, but I'm gonna take you with me on this process. If I just turn up real fast, I'm gonna cut into a car, right? Yeah, that's my ringtone, man. Uh, you know, that's my ringtone because I put in work, right? <laughs> so yeah, um, so I'm going up slow and I'm just taking you along with me for the, for the process. I'm gonna switch uh, screen so you can see this. Okay, you can see all these cars. I've gotta get up to the gate. So I'm just gonna take my time and roll up. We're at Metro Detroit Airport, right? And I'm just going slow. If I go too fast, I'm gonna lose my position. And hopefully my loved one is up there by the door, but maybe they're not. So you get a chance to see all these cars. They're from Ohio, Michigan. You see people all over the country coming. See, this person's getting out of the car. What's up with that, right? Car could be broken down, could be a rear end collision. So I'm just going up slow, just taking my time. And you can see people, they're all masked up, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of these people are coming from Florida, um, you know, and I'm just going up slow and I'm gonna move up really slow. So you gotta make a decision. What decision would you make? Would you try to get up to the door and wait? Would you move slowly forward? I'm gonna do a little bit of both. Uh, you don't wanna cut off cars. This is real life out here. So I'm gonna, I still can talk to you. Uh, this person is, looks like they're from Ohio. You know, they're cutting out. So, you know, no one's mad. You can't just go rage mode on these people. Oh, you cut me off. No, you just gotta be patient. You have to wait. And, uh, you know, I got a text, so my loved one could be up there at the door. So I'm just gonna move slow. Because if I lose my spot, I'm gonna have to go all the way around. You know, the question is, I'm gonna switch greens back. You know, what would you do? Would you sit here and kind of inch up? Would you go up by the door? But, you know, I want to hear from you guys, right? What, what would you do, right? Um, and it's, it's, it's almost 1 a.m., but I'm rocking it. You know, I, I have my little coffee, coffee. I'm good, you know. Um, but I was looking forward to this coming to Metro Airport. So, you know, I'm going to be nice. Let them come out. Uh, wait, inch for, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm inching up. I feel you. I'm inching up. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Rihanna, work, work, work. Yeah, that's that's my ringtone because I put in work. Uh, not sure with this. So I'm just going slow. I'm almost up to the door, right? Um, and flights could be early. Flights could be late. And real talk, you know. So uh, I'm just waiting. And I'm going to send this message. And, you know, I got both hands on the wheel. I'm going to switch screens a minute. You see this person, you know, they could have been coming from Florida. They could have the coronavirus. We don't know, right? But numbers are surging back up. And you got to be real. You got to be safe, right? I'm, I'm not speaking real facts, mm -hmm. right? So I'm still here waiting. And then again, what would you guys do? Would you bust up to the door and then the police come and move driver? That's what the police are going to say, right? They see me here. So then I'm going to inch forward. I'm almost up. So I'm just gonna go slow, mm -hmm. right? See, I got the text. Uh, it said, you know, they mm -hmm. just landed. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize, yes, it's it's thousands of people here at Metro Airport. I'm at Detroit Metro Airport. Um, I just got a text. Um, my loved one just landed. Mm -hmm. So, um, I did the right thing. You guys told me the right thing. If I would have bust up by the door, I would have got kicked out, right? What I really want to do is get over to the right. But if I go over to the right, I'll be blocked in, right? Technically, we're this is the tollway zone, right? And I'm sure you're in your real life. This is, I'm going to go really slow. And then if I have to go slow, you can't see behind me. I'm going to try to show you a back view. Um, you really can't see behind me, but there are hundreds of cars behind me. And my loved one just got off the plane, right? Sometimes planes are early, sometimes planes are late. You know, you're, you're on that plane, you breathe in that air, other people are breathing. No, I'm, <laughs> I'd rather drive, right? My loved one is coming back from Florida, right? So that's a whole nother situation right there. Um, but I'm up to uh, the gate. Uh, the door, but I'm just going to go slow. I'm going to be patient and, and just wait. When you're patient when you drive, good things will happen. If you're impatient, you're going to miss your exit. You're going to run out of gas. You're going to get lost. 
because one time I was driving uh, to Wisconsin, I ended up in West Virginia, for real. Yes, and I was scared. <laughs> it happens. What do you do when you get bored? Um, listen to music in the car, chill, uh, work hard. Um, I'm a goal-oriented person, and I am thinking about starting another YouTube channel, for real. Um, and, you know, it's going to be about drag racing. I got a 68 Camaro. I've learned a lot. Uh, yeah, oh, the vibes are awesome at the airport. You really interact. And I saw something on TV where there are actually people who live at the airport. That's right. They live there. Uh, <laughs> I know. You're like, what? They do live there. Uh, and the airport is so big. You know, they do security sweeps. Um, so, uh, yes, if you're seeing Pursuit of Happiness and Will Smith, there's a scene where they were homeless and he and his son were locked in um, a uh, airport and the security were banging on the door. And man, that, that broke my heart. You got to watch Pursuit of Happiness. That's real talk. I love Will Smith. Great actor. Really good content. You know, just to kind of keep you going and keep, keep it real with you. So I'm just here waiting and I'm still going to be patient because I don't know, you know, how far my loved ones got to come. If you've been through an airport, it's a long haul, right? Uh, that's Oh, yeah, the, mo the movie's incredible, right? And uh, and you see that tear running down Will Smith's uh, face, and it's really his son there. So I love Pursuit of Happiness, right? I love all of Will Smith's movies because he keeps it real, right? You know, early on getting jiggy with it, you know, going down to Miami, right? And, of course, you know DMX died too. Man, that broke my heart. Uh, he was in a coma, so they decided to pull the plug on him. Um, that broke my heart, too, right? That's that's for real. Uh, what's it like, uh, the funniest moment while driving? Um, you see people reading, shaving, driving with their knee. I'm not that good. I'll crash, right? Um, I try to really focus on, you know, it's real easy to get distracted out here if you're daydreaming. Uh, you could run into a car, go off the road, because distracted driving is so incredible today, where a lot of people are out here not paying attention. Literally, they can rear-end you, they can sideswipe you, truck drivers on the phone, school bus drivers on the phone. People are on the phone, and, you know, you just got to be safe. So um, I put the car in park, and you notice I'm going to switch screens a moment. You notice I'm keeping space in front of me. Uh, favorite song of Drive To, um, you know, I like Rihanna, um, you know, really chilled music, some, sometimes hype music to keep your energy going so you don't fall asleep. Um, Megan Thee Stallion, she's really hot right now. Um, you know, sometimes I like uh, some Christian chilled music, right? Anything with a nice strong beat, I'm with it, man, you know to really keep me going. And this is where you have your playlist. If you're driving three, four, five, six hours, you got your playlist. And then when you have your playlist, you can drive freaking across the world, right? <laughs> but you gotta have that music because that music is your vibe. That music is your energy, right? So, you know, I'm going back to me. So you gotta have you, a lot of people today, you can make your playlist and then you just plug it in. Uh, how do you uh, overcome driving near semi trucks? You know what? you've got to gradually build that confidence because if you hang around trucks, they're going to come in your lane. They have to make some lane changes. You know, what I've seen over the years, drivers are so much more aggressive. Uh, little old ladies are aggressive. Uh, teenagers are aggressive. Heck, your parents are aggressive. So if you develop that aggressive nature, it could be bad or it could be good. But also can, you know, you can get tickets because if everyone is driving 70, 75, 80, 85, you're going to think it's okay. And then you're going to get a big ticket. I think you need to develop a consistent driving behavior where you're driving at the speed limit. You're polite. You're courteous. You're not trying to go road rage mode. And that way you'll be more consistent. And I think being kind, being polite is still a good thing to be, right? Um, you have to be more defensive today. What I find is you got to be more defensive because there's so many more drivers out here who are impatient. I remember I was driving home from school. This 
young lady, 17 or 22 years old, she just put a middle finger up at me. And I'm like, what? And I was getting over to the right, didn't cut her off. How do you overcome fear of semi-trucks? Um, you, you can't hang around near blind spots. You gotta get out of their blind spots because yeah, I see these cars moving up. So I'm getting a little bit more inspired. You stay out of their blind spots. Uh, you have to eventually pass them. In the winter time, that's what is really, really crazy, right? Because if you um, hang around their blind spots, they're gonna come over and cut you off. But if you're going too slow, they're almost gonna rear end you. And a lot of drivers, and I've seen this on TV, fall asleep because they're trying to make money. You know, they, they have to drive eight, nine, or 10 hours, and then by law, they gotta get sleep. All these guys and ladies, and I'm not saying all, are breaking the law. They're breaking the law, driving 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours, and they fall asleep at the wheel. So I try not to hang around those semi trucks. We did see a tire explode uh, going down to Indiana. Uh, we saw that semi truck tire explode. It was scary. It was a big puff of white smoke, and then all this rubber on the ground. And that rubber, though, if you've seen those big recap rubbers on the ground, it can really see it's 105 in the morning. So let me let me let me go back and switch screens again. I'm gonna ask you guys some questions. What would you do? Would you go up by the door? Would you send a text? Um, it it is scary stuff because. A lot of these truck drivers don't have the money or the companies they work for, they don't buy good tires. They buy recapped or recoiled tires. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you get what you pay for. So those tires heat up, they explode, and then the truck driver could lose control. There's rubber and debris all over the road. Those steel belts can cut your hand. Trust me, I know I had a blowout before when I got lost. I should have been in Wisconsin. I was in West Virginia. I'm like, what the heck's going on? But I got to my appointment. So you got to really be aware when you're on the road. I was crossing the street and then a semi truck passed me. Um, they're really huge. And going down to Florida, I'm taking you back. When I got my race car going down to Florida, those truck drivers were driving 100 miles an hour. 100 miles an hour down in Florida, bro. And I'm like, wow. Me and my friend Michael, we got my race car. You know, going down to West Palm Beach. They were driving so fast, so, um, you know, you, you learn from this. So I'm getting a little bit anxious because, you know, the gate's up there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch screens and gonna ask you what you do. Uh, I uh, Do you race cars? Yes, I have a 68 Camaro. Um, it's a small tire car. Um, you know, makes about 880 horsepower, which is nothing today because you can get an LS junkyard motor and get a eBay turbo and make 1300, 1400 horsepower. And then you blow it up and do it all over again. So um, I'm thinking about starting this next channel and maybe making it a nitrous motor or turbo. Uh, the car's got a roll cage in there, uh, you know, ladder bar car. Um, you know, I, I've already made some thumbnails. I've already made eight to 10 videos. So I'm thinking about rolling it out, right? Uh, I do drag race. Uh, I do have my competition uh, drag racing license. There's a special process you have to go through to get your license. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking about documenting this and it's an expensive endeavor. I bought a turnkey car. The car won the world championship. And then, you know, I raced it a few years and then it's at home. So I got some ideas about, you know, rolling this out again. Um, so yeah, uh, my dream car, Definitely right now it would be a track hawk. I have a 2014 SRT truck, you know, it's built. Um, I'm gonna trade that in and get a track hawk or a wide body. Um, uh, maybe a Tesla, I'm really thinking about that too because that's all wheel drive, that's safe, but they're 70, $80,000. So I just wanna decide on what I should do. Um, you know, so I have some time. I'm gonna try to get it uh, late fall uh, you know, we just working hard to pay these bills. So I'm going to move up a little bit and I don't want to lose my space here. Right. Um, and I'm going to get up by the door. And again, uh, what are some of the essentials you should have in your car? Uh, have gloves, have some type of nylon rope in case you go into the ditch. And I used to have an 87 IROC Z 
and the thing was terrible in the winter time. I went in the ditch like multiple times, right? But that's all I had. So uh, it was a five speed, very fun. You know, I blew up the transmission like four times, blew up the rear gear like five times. Um, but, you know, I do have a picture. I just got to find it. Uh, but, you know, have gloves in the car, have uh, some type of like, you can go to Harbor Freight. Uh, again, I'm not endorsed by them, you, but you can go to Harbor Freight. You can get a, um, a high output light because you got to be able to see, but most people will use their phone, have some basic hand tools in the car, you know, some, some, some clothes, you know, a white tee, some blue jeans, um, jumper cables are important and some basic hand tools. You got to know how to change a tire too, uh, and jack up your vehicle. So those things are important and I will be shooting some content like that. So you got to have those basic hand tools, um, in there. What would be a good fast car? Any car today, because a lot of cars see people are moving up. Uh, any car today, uh, but you gotta go slow before you can go fast. If you wanna drift and all that, there are places around the country that you can go and do it legally. Um, and I'm not advocating going out in the street and racing because you're gonna kill someone, they're gonna take your car, you're gonna lose your license. It's not worth it for me to do that. Uh, but a lot of people are doing it. They're drifting in the streets and it's and people get killed, right? Uh, innocent people are coming out and then they get killed. So, um, you know, I, go to the racetrack. You know, you got to have your license. You sign a waiver in case you crash. You can't sue the drag strip, right? And I'll be showing you that content once I start up this next channel. I'm just kind of giving you guys a little, uh, ladies, a little uh, preview. Right, and ask some questions. If you've asked questions, I'll tell you. I can't tell you everything yet, but I will tell you. Um, so I've always been passionate about racing. I really should have got into maybe automotive engineering. Um, my dad was an electrician, you know, grew up west side of Detroit, you know, Mustangs, you know, uh, Camaros. Uh, so when you grow up in the Motor City, you love cars. And then uh, that's what you do. Uh, I mean, the first not too fast. Well, you know, any um, a Camaros are a nice car. The car in front of me is a Camaro. It looks like a 2017, 2018. But remember, when you're young, that insurance is going to be really high. Um, a lot of people, uh, you know, get the Equinox. Those are pretty good. Uh, the Chevy Trailblazer, uh, full of safety features, uh, lane departure, you know, driver assist, uh, passenger side airbag, front side airbag. All these safety features really help reduce accidents. But if a lot of you subscribe to me, check out On Scene TV. They go to accidents and they just video. They don't talk. And they really give you insight. Like Tiger Woods, we actually saw his crash. What's your opinion on designing? Rolls Royce, a special design exclusive. You see a lot of cars being, um, they kind of look the same today. Right. The, the region, the reason I mentioned the Tesla, a really unique design. Um, I'm an SUV person and, uh, you know, I like an SUV. I'm 6'4", like 270, so I need room. I really can't fit in a smaller car. So um, I've, I've, I've had a sport coupe. I've had that uh, uh, Z28 Camaro. Um, you know, I'm a married guy now, so I don't need to be rolling around in SUV. Doesn't mean I'm gonna be in a minivan, big pimping, right? I always will have a, you know, a nice sporty vehicle. So let me let me let me flip screens and ask you guys this. So what would you do here? Uh, my loved one has texted me. It's 1:15 a.m. Would you move up by the door? Would you stay here? What would you do? You know. So I'm gonna sit here and have you guys kind of direct me a little bit. I'm sitting here, um, you know, would you move forward? Would you stay where you are? Would you try to inch forward? Uh, because this is this person is from Missouri. I was, and I'm gonna flip screens a second. This person is from Missouri. Okay, we're in Michigan. So they're a long way away, right? I'm not saying they drove from Missouri out here, but they're probably hanging out with someone here in Michigan, right? Uh, what, what model Tesla, uh, the Sport Coupe, uh, the longer one, um, that's what I'm looking for. I don't know. Is it the Model D? Don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, but one of my students' dad had one, and he traded his uh, SRT truck in, 
and he got a 19 or a 17 and he said they're great uh you know all-wheel drive good performance he gets great range uh, and where i am there are a lot of charging stations it depends on the state you live but you know the teslas are awesome the used ones are good you just got to make sure you get a good one and it's, it's fully certified because that's a serious investment but you see a lot more young people with the teslas out here and you know they're out here driving so uh again i'm gonna i'm gonna flip screens and what would you do you know i see people would you move forward uh would you get a little bit anxious because my loved one is probably here and i'm gonna text a second and see um what model would you get uh design of course my first car was a chevy malibu uh it was a 19.3 chevy malibu i got it for like a hundred dollars it did not have any heat in there um and this car it was my first car i brought it home my dad was like boy you bought this piece of junk home but it was my piece of junk right um so you know i drove it i put headers on there you know long mufflers uh it was a 350 um engine um quadrajet carburetor uh uh, a 350 turbo transmission um it was a nice car it was safe um and that got me around for a few years um then what had happened you know we built a motor for it you know put a cam in headers and all that then i went to see my brother at the northwestern ymc i'm taking you back keeping it real with you um i was making a left turn and some old man hit my car. I had just put the motor in. I was so done. I was so emotional, so sad. And um, my car was basically totaled. My heart was broken. And this is just before I was getting ready to go to college, right? So I'm thinking, man, I can drive to college. Um, but see, I see the police over there. You can't see the police, but they're, they're being chilled. You can't block everything. So that's what happened to my first car. The junk guy came over and said, I'll give you $150 for the motor. I spent like $350 on the motor. I said, no, that's okay. So we just pulled the motor out, dropped it in my mom's garage, and then I just went on to college, right? Um, they dropped me off at college, and I got a football scholarship. So I was blessed in that. And then that, that was my car that got smashed up. So that's why you got to be careful out here because you know most of you will get the second or third car that your parents have if you're lucky enough to buy your car you know take care of it because if you get into an accident the police came and gave the guy a ticket but my car was totaled i was a hot mess i was very upset right so we're here at metro airport um i kind of want to you know what would you guys do uh yeah i play football i uh was blessed to get a football scholarship tried out for the detroit lions San Diego Chargers, a couple Canadian teams. So you guys are getting some bonus content with me, right? So I've always loved that. And uh, yeah, so if you ask, if you ask, I'll tell you, right? Um, so uh, go forward a little bit. Um, you want me to change lanes and go to the left? Uh, you want me to move forward? If I go over to the left lane, uh, one over to the left, I'm going to lose my space because we can't block this whole thoroughfare. They're like 150 to 200 cars behind. Work, 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 work. So that's that ringtone again. Um, so I'm just sitting here chilling, but you can't just leave your car parked because that's when you're gonna get your car towed. I'm smart enough to know that. Um, you know, here's also, here's the deal. I'm not holding brake, but you're gonna get cramps in your leg. I'm starting to get a cramp in my right leg. Um, so what's what's going on jake jake how you doing um i'm probably going to stay too um i'm here at the airport my loved one is up further right jake we we're just here at metro detroit airport man we keeping it real out here I'm, I'm i'm connecting with you you know ask me anything and i'll tell you you know you guys know what type of car i first had i took driver's ed in my high school and i talk about that process driving on the range then you go take your road test at the DMV and hopefully you got enough experience, right? We talked about the laws changing. The laws changed where I'm from about 12 years ago. Uh, no, I don't see my loved one yet. Uh, 
is it easy to get food on campus? Um, yeah, yes. Uh, hey, Jake, I'm keeping it real. You know, I'm trying to stack up this money and maybe get a track hawk. Uh, at the end of the year, a wide body charger or maybe a Tesla. I'm just not sure yet. So um, I'm, I'm just here waiting. So I'm getting a text. My loved one is like, dude, where are you? So I'm going to switch screens a minute and show you the traffic. Would you move up? Because I'm getting texts. They're waiting. Uh, what would you do? Right. So would you stay here or move up? If I move up, I'm just gonna go up a couple cars, right? And just kind of be sitting here. So I'm stuck in traffic. There's nothing you really can do. You just have to stay here. Um, you know, what are you gonna do? Leave your vehicle here? And I want you to see this. What are you gonna do? Leave your vehicle here, run up to, hey, I'm here. Then your junk's gonna be towed, right? Work, 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 work. So, um, they're moving up, so I'm going to move up. Airports, they are complicated. They are complicated, right? Because you're tired. Your loved one is tired. They've been on the airplane. See, I accidentally cut off this person. I'm not trying to do that, but there's nothing I can do. I'm not going to put myself in a bad position. Oh, you see this girl? You see her getting getting feisty, right? And I'm, I'm laughing, but she's coming out of nowhere. She almost got a little butt ran over, right? That's what you see. You see, I know, bro. I'm keeping it real with you out here. She's like, hold on. Girl, please. I'm just here chilling, right? This is this is how people get on the nut. They go crazy like this. I want you to see this so you know how to act, right? So if I was a crazy person, she would have got snapped on. It's not even this serious, right? I know some Mary, you're like, what? I'm keeping it real out here with you. So you just got to be patient like a saint. Um, and, you know, once I get up near the door, you know, I'll send a text, but I'm just keeping it real with you, you know, and I'm going to see this. But guess what? They're sitting here stuck because my man and lady in this Camaro, they blocked in. Right. So what I'm going to do, ram their door. That does not make sense. Right. Um, if you're patient, you get out. If you're impatient, you get your car smashed up because a lot of people. Drive old up, oh, you see people all hyped up now. Oh yeah, you hear this. So now we hear this. And once one person starts, another person starts. Right? So I'm gonna keep moving. She making a face at me too. So <laughs> you kind of see, right? And I'm chilled. You know, I'm just gonna move up, driving like a little old man, taking my time. I want you guys to see this. This is for real out here, right? This Honda to my left, that's a nice little car. Get good mileage, a little performance. If you want to put a little pipe on there for a little sound, get a little cold air intake, you can buy a little eBay turbo and you can get, you know, 10 to 15, 20 horsepower. So Honda some nice vehicles. So I'm just moving up slow. I'm not trying to lose my spot. Um, and you just got to take your time, man. This, this is for real out here. So I'm just chilling, right? There's nothing you can really do except chill and you wait. Because if you're impatient, you're going to get your car smashed up. Uh, you're going to be looking like a hot mess. That's that's facts out here. So if you just popped in, we're at Metro Airport, Detroit Metro Airport. I'm picking up a loved one. This girl tried to, you know, snap on me. Yes, step, wait. You know, uh, and we'll catch it on the replay. You know, people all masked up. People looking for their loved ones. I'm just going to move up a little bit. Uh, and I'm not trying to lose my space, right? Uh, see, you see the line moving now, right? So I'm going to keep moving up. People flashing lights, trying to get all crazy, right? Uh, I'm doing good. Um, you know, we're here at Metro Airport. You know, people trying to act crazy. This girl tried to snap on me. Stop. Wait. You know, I'm here chilling. You know, you got to be patient. You know, I'm waiting for the loved one right now. Um and I almost want to go over to the curb, but that's a striped area. And I'm not trying to get um, in trouble, right? Um, and you got to make decisions out here. This is real life. So I decided to just push play and let you learn. We're at Metro Airport. You see people getting off planes. Just got a text from my loved one. I'm here. Where you at? I'm here at the North Terminal, right? Coming off on Spirit Airlines, right? So, you know, I'm watching people, 
you know, people looking crazy, looking scary. They are all tired, you know, terrible, you know, airplane food, right? But you got to be patient. See, now people starting to toot horns and I'm not going to get caught up with all that because I'm not really an aggressive person like that. You know, I'm just going to be waiting patiently, looking for my loved one. And that's all you really can do is just wait. If I go up too far, then I'm going to miss this. And I don't want to have to go back around again, right? So you got my gas is good. I'm at a half a tank, right? This is a fuel efficient vehicle. So I'm sitting good. I want you to see this view. And I'm going to keep it. I'm going to switch views a second. You know, this this young lady tried to snap on me. You know, hold on, wait, hold on. Let me answer this. Oh, my loved one just reached out, right? I know you like that ringtone, right? My loved one just reached out. So the problem is, you know, I'm at the North Terminal. They got to get to the North Terminal. There's no number. So there's that confusion. So, you know, would you stay here? Would you move forward? What would you do, right? Um, so you got to make decisions out here. And don't let people rest you because if you lose your spot, I've been sitting here almost an hour, right? And this is why you want to have, you know, good fuel in your car. Uh, I'm sitting here patient. You can't let people go crazy on you. I'm going to switch screens a second and let all of you see this. So I'm here at Metro Airport. You know, um, I'm trying to find out what terminal I'm at. I'm at the North Terminal. That's what they told me. Um, but also, you know, we got to get her to come outside waiting for my loved one from Florida. And, uh, you know, you just got to come outside and wait. So you get a chance to see people, you know, coming, you know, she got her little bath and body works, her little fragrance kit, right? Um, I'm watching. So I'm just sitting here. And as long as the police are not forcing me, uh, where do you see most accidents on the road? Uh, people merging on. That's the real dangerous thing. Um, so let me ask you this. Should I get over all the way to the right? Uh, what type of car are you driving? I'm driving a Jeep. Uh, I think it's a Jeep Compass. It's a smaller model. I have a 2014 SRT at the house. Uh, but that thing drinks a lot of gas. So I'm in the small one right now now. Right? Um, good mileage. Good performance. Um, so the question is, should I move up to the right and wait? Uh, should I stay here and wait? Because if I go too far up, I'm going to miss um, this. I have to go all the way around. So I want to hear from all of you. What would you do if you're picking up your loved one? Right? You see people popping out. Um, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to get this car towed because the police will come out and uh, they're going to tow your car. So um, would you stay here and wait? Would you, you know, I'm trying to find out what gate I'm at because that's that's a confusing part. You know, I'm just here chilling and waiting um, and you got to make decisions. Wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting, Mary. I'm, I'm sitting here waiting. My gas is good. Right. I'm, I'm chilling. I'm patient. And, uh, you know, people can hock and go crazy. You let them go crazy because I'm more than halfway through this. And if I lose my my spot. I'm going to have to go all the way back around again. And I don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that. Um, you know, my phone is good, right? Um, you just got to be here waiting. I'm trying to find a number, you know, so I can tell my loved one, hey, I'm here, right? And, you know, you have to make decisions. You see people, you know, trying to cut up on you. You see people who are nice and courteous, right? Um, but I want you to see the whole process through. If you got questions for me, ask, ask questions, right? Uh, this is real. Out here. So that's that ringtone again. I'm just here chilling, right? Um, trying to wait and uh, get to a certain exit, trying to find a number. And, you know, that's what you want to do. You just want to wait uh, because if you move too far forward, you're going to lose your spot. And then you're going to be messed up. I've been here in line waiting for an mm -hmm. hour, right? And there's nothing you really can do. So um, that's that's all you can do is just wait. And hopefully your loved one will come out. You see people walking. You see people getting in right now. And, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. But I see people, um, 
uh, getting out and maybe I should, so what would you do? Would you stay here? Would you get over to the right? Which is really uh, a loading zone, pick up and drop off, right? Would you pick up and drop off? Would you just pull over here to the right? Uh, would you stay here? I wanna hear what you guys would do. You know, what? what is the best thing? I'm not worried about my gas, I'm good here. I got that AC on, my battery's good on my phone, so I'm good, good. Um, but, you know, this is the time, ask, ask me questions, right? You know, I, I took my driver's ed at my high school, we had a little course behind the high school. It was actually a driving range, it had traffic lights, parking areas, had like 10 cars, had a steering wheel, brake, gas, and then you would go out in groups of four. Every person would drive 10 or 15 minutes, and then you would drive. The weather there, um, it's about 55 or 60 degrees. Uh, you know, I'm trying to make better thumbnails. You know, give me some feedback. I'm really learning. And uh, that thumbnail, if I can make a good thumbnail, you'll click. So I'm learning. And, uh, you know, what I want to do, um, I'm going to be going to California. See, I'm giving you bonus content. I'm I will be going, hopefully, my goal is to go to California, San Diego, to go to uh, VidCon and, and uh, really learn, you know, from Mr. Beast, Daryl Eves, some of the great people who teach you how to make really good content. I really have learned a lot. Oh, yeah. What's up, Ashley? Hold on, let me answer. Reconnecting. Just got a text from my loved one. Upstairs. I'm downstairs by Spirit, North Terminal. I'm not moving, bro. Because if I move, I spend an hour to come up here. You feel me on this? I spend an hour. So why would I move? And my leg is freaking hurting. So I'm putting this in park. What are the funniest distances you have driven? Um, the farthest distance I've driven from Michigan to Kansas, uh, Michigan to Texas, um, Michigan to Wisconsin, Michigan to West Virginia. I got lost. Oh, bro, here's you're gonna love this. Um, in college, uh, I had a tryout with a couple of uh, World League teams. I drove from Michigan up to Montreal, and I don't even speak French. Took the 401, bro, right? Took the 401, and that was a crazy drive, right? You, you're not sure what your speed is, you know, kilometers versus mile per hour. So, yeah. Uh, what I missed, it was, what's happening. Okay, so we talked about my 68 Camaro, our drag race. I will be starting a drag racing channel. Um, I took my driver's ed at high school and then they had a course. A lot of high schools today have dropped driver's ed because it costs so much money. You had to get 10 or 15 cars. You got to have four or five kids. Um, I started out at Wichita State. I had uh, uh, five offers to play football and I ended up transferring back right? Uh, I get car sick really easy. Uh, you know, you got to crack that window, get some air. Uh, a lot of people do get car sick very easily. You know, I'm giving you guys bonus content. I'm keeping it real. I'm at Metro Airport and you're right along with me, baby. It's 1.30 a.m. You guys are up late, but it's all good now. It's all good. You're going to learn. Ask questions. You're getting bonus content because all of you are supporting me. I'm going to support you. And while you're there, get us, get us a thumbs up right give it a thumbs up ask me questions people ask me questions about driver's education uh this lady young lady tried to cut up on me she said stop stop i'm gonna, I'm gonna flip screens a minute this this young lady tried to cut up on me and you know no one's really losing their mind we're just sitting here chilling waiting and we're all waiting for our loved ones you can't lose your mind and, and go gorilla on someone right <laughs> you feel me you can't do that you gotta be safe, you gotta chill, and just wait. No one's acting crazy. I told my loved one to come out and walk up and down the sidewalk. I'm actually at the last entrance, and then hopefully they see me, because if I keep moving forward, I'm gonna miss this terminal. I'm not going back around again, that's crazy. You know, what would you do? Would you stay here? Would you go back out and swing back around? All right, it's 12, it's, it's like 12, 12 degrees in Chicago. Um, is that what you're saying? Okay, hey, I appreciate you, Anthony. Right, it's all good. Uh, hopefully, I brought you some value. Give it a thumbs up, share, like. You know, I'm keeping it real. So, we at Metro, we at Detroit Metro Airport, baby. You know, I got a half a tank of gas. You know, got a little money in my pocket, waiting for my loved one to come from Florida. You know, 
uh, the count in Michigan is going back at 12 a.m. Yes, it's uh, 1.35 a.m. on this clock, right? Um, it's tw 12 in Chicago. Yeah, time difference. Um, so, you know, we talked about, you know, uh, I think I would wait until you see. Yeah, 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 I'm waiting, bro. I'm not going to let anyone try to snap on me and, and, and move, right? We all are waiting here for our loved ones. And uh, if I would have moved forward, I would lose, um, you know, my space. So you got to sit patiently. And sometimes you make the right decision. Sometimes you make the wrong decision. But in driving, you have to make a decision, right? And that's the biggest thing that I see in student drivers and drivers who are older make decisions. I've taught teens. I've taught adults. Um, and it's a great journey. Every two years, I have to recertify. I have to do a physical, uh, you know, intense medical examination to make sure I'm capable of doing driver's ed. But it's been a blessed opportunity. So, you know, ask some questions right now. I'm waiting for my loved one to come. They went to Florida for two weeks, right? Uh, in fact, they shut down flights coming back to Detroit and the, the departures are later or they're waiting. So my loved one just got on the plane just before they shut down everything. And that's no joke. So would you move up? I'm going to switch screens a minute. This this vehicle is moving up. Would you move up? Would you stay here? What would all of you do? Right? I got this gap here. So my man here trying to act crazy, trying to squeeze this little car in. So I'm just going to chill here. You're going to see my man trying to come through right now. Right? You're going to see this car inching forward. And people get crazy, man. So here's this guy just inching forward. And would you stay here? Would you move forward? And would you chill? This could be my loved one right here. No, that hair is too long. Right? Is this my loved one? Nah, hair too long. Is it? Oh my God, yes! Oh! <laughs> hey, baby! Hold on. Hey, baby, come on in here. This is my girl right here. This is my loved one. I got my baby back. <laughs> girl, I didn't recognize you. Girl, here all along, you all suntan. I love you, baby. Love you See, too. I got my loved one. Hey, I got my loved one here. She coming from Florida. Girl, this girl tried to cut up on me. Stop, stop, wait, wait. Honey, I've been here an hour and a half. <laughs> right? An hour and a half waiting. Mama blowing me up. You blow. No, mom's blowing up my shit. I know. Oh, girl, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we keep it real right here. So we on YouTube, girl. We keep it real. So I'm just teaching my people. So now we're going to bust a move out of here. I'm going to keep you guys on a few more minutes. So I got my love. I got tears in my eyes. She's been gone for a while, a minute. I had to learn Snapchat <laughs> to, to talk to her. It's all good. you right. I got my girl, I got my daughter. She's 18. She was down there. I did not recognize her. I'm like, who's this girl with this long hair, this hat on? Like, that's my loved one, right? So, I knew you didn't recognize me. No, I didn't recognize you. You could have kicked me in the head, right? Um, yeah, of course I'm going to get her safely. You know, my family member's not going to drive out here. My daughter knows dad. I know you're going to come and get me. You know, I talked to your brother in Iowa. He's like, this. Look at this. what? What? You got a tattoo? It's fake. Oh! It's fake. Oh! It's Girl, she she got a is that a dolphin? No. What is that? It's a mockingjay. She got a she got a tattoo. You can't see it. Oh, it's a bird. Okay. Uh 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 uh. We we gonna ignore that. You you talk. Okay. So my girl got a temporary tattoo, right? But yeah, I'm like, but she she wants a tattoo, right? So you know what happens in Florida stays in Florida, right? <laughs> okay, so what would you do? Would you would you bust a move? And let me flip screens a second. Would, would you bust a move out of here? Would you just zip all the way over to the left and say, I'm out, bro. So I'm, I'm going to turn on my left blinker, you know, be that gentleman. You know, I, I got, you know, I got a person with a, with a scat pack over here, you know, got my blinker on. Florida's crazy. Well, my daughter was down there being crazy with her girls, so, you know, 16, 18, 20 people. We, we, we going to keep it private what she was doing, right? But I'm, I'm a chill parent. You know, I'm, I'm real chilled, and she knows that. We can talk. I love her. So, um, see, now people got me blocked. Oh, okay, my man going to let me out, right? I appreciate you, bro. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate you, Kyle. For real. See, my man let me out. Yeah, that's what's up. So I'm looking. I'm thanking my man. Right, right. Now, you know. See, now I'm trying to get up out of this maze. So I'm going to let you see what's going on. So let me flip screens a minute. See, I got tears in my eyes. That's real. I haven't seen my girl in a minute. Right? When we get home, our dog just going to go crazy. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so we just keeping it real. Uh, slow and steady. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's crazy tonight. And we not even in downtown Detroit, bro. That's a whole new thing. And I'm going to get all of you some good content. Right? We, we're going to go to Belle Isle. We're going to go on Jefferson. We're going to see some real stuff. And I got that GoPro coming, Emily. I got, I'll order my GoPro. Now, she's the master. She's got a bunch of stuff. Uh, got to be patient there. Yeah, you got to be patient, Kyle. You got to respect drivers. Okay, let's go, uh, then. Okay. I can't go anywhere. My girl telling me go. Uh, I'm talking about your recording. Okay, I'll, I'll be done in a minute. I'm just sitting here. Well, I just got here. I know you just got here. She's trying to tell me go. Where can I go? What am I going to do? Run over someone? Honk my horn like I'm crazy? What are you bringing out? Seashells or something? She... <laughs> She reaching in her bag, right? So I'm bringing you, you know, cause you know that TSA, you know, everything's in a plastic bag, right? So I'm just gonna show you this. Dad. Okay. She on that Florida stuff, bro. So she got a little fisherman hat on, all this. <laughs> it's all good. I'd like to talk to you. Oh, okay. My daughter says she wants to talk to me. So I wanna say I love you all very much. Uh, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for staying on. This is real. We at the Metro Airport, baby. Um, and, uh, you know, let me show you this real quick. Um, there's nowhere I can go. What I'm going to do, act crazy, you know, honk my horn, go wild. When a little gap opens, I'm going to bust up out of here. You know this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be safe. But I just want to say I love all of you. Thank you for just staying here and supporting this journey. It was real. You know, picked up my daughter from Florida. That's my loved one. Um, but, uh, you know, support my channel, you know, give me some feedback on my thumbnails. Um, you know, give me some feedback on, because I make this for you. And those of you who stayed with me, learned a lot about me growing up, you know, schooling and everything. Peace out, Kyle. Thank you so much, Anthony, Sydney, all of you. Thank you so much. And then we'll talk again soon. Bye.